hotel room called Embassy Row Hotel right here in downtown DC and I'm loving it so far everything is gorgeous but I'm gonna get outside and explore a little bit so I'll show you more of the hotel the places I'm gonna be seeing while I'm here and hopefully you enjoy and here is my gorgeous hotel the Embassy Row Hotel right on Massachusetts Avenue in downtown DC Here we are going up the stairs into the lobby of the Embassy Row Hotel and to the right we have the front desk where I checked in that has all the really cool artwork, love the wall. And then here's the lobby with the really funky chairs, you can almost hide in them, it's so cool. And then you have a really nice view of the street, so you can see all the cars passing by in the older buildings and I love the color palette of everything here. Here we have the other half of the lobby leading into the dining area. So they have a bar and they have an area for you to sit down and eat and order from their restaurant. And then they have a cafe and then a kind of grab and go section. Now we're going down the golden staircase, which I love, it's so gorgeous. And they have these beautiful cherry blossoms painted on the wall. I really wish I could have seen them, but you know, they weren't in season yet in DC, but I digress. Anyway, down here is sort of a lounge area slash business center. And then there's conference rooms around the back, but you can come down here and hang out with your friends or other people from the hotel, have one of your drinks from the bar from upstairs, or you can have meetings down here. There's a couple computers where you can, you know, send emails, draft up presentations, do whatever you need to do. Here's one of the conference rooms. I think people can rent them out or have meetings down here, things of that nature. But I just love all the design that they have in here. And that's part of the reason that drew me to this hotel was because of the interior design and how everything kind of meshes together and, and isn't bland like other hotels. Here we have the what they call the adult playroom, which I'm glad it was a lot different than what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> but there's like a foosball table, there's a ping pong table, or what is it, table tennis, whatever you call it. But I love the artwork that's on these elevators, and then it leads into the gym, which you know, of course, I'm not going to be using because I am lazy. But anyway. Here is the gym, it has all the equipment, all the weights, the treadmills in the back, you can stock up on towels and water and all the things you need to have your workout. Now I'm finally getting into my hotel room, which I think I got upgraded to a king because that was all that was available when I checked in. So that worked out for me. The bathroom was perfect. And then there's this funky mirror right here, which I used every day to make sure I looked right. And in the closet there, there's like a safe, ironing board, things of that nature. And then this giant, beautiful window, which also has blackout curtains, which came in handy because I went straight to sleep as soon as I got in here. But I loved this blue wall. This is really what made me fall in love with the hotel. Now the first day I was in DC, I had to go see the National Museum of African American History and Culture, one of the Smithsonian Institute museums. And it's my first time here, I didn't even know where to get tickets at, I just got in this random line and it turned out this lady behind me had a bunch of extra tickets she had already printed out so I got to use one of hers, so I lucked out. Here we have the lobby and the welcome center, which is what you'll see when you first come in. 
Now this is the second floor, which has the Family History Center, the Center for African American Media Arts, and there's just a lot of interactive galleries and things for people to play with and touch and just learn more about. Now this level is the third level, which is full of galleries for large communities of people to kind of go through and navigate. So in this section, we have African Americans in sports like Jesse Owens, the Harlem Globetrotters, Jackie Robinson, all these type of people and how these are celebrated figures in not only African American history, but American history and how they advance through sports and physical activity. There's also a section on this level dealing with the African American experience being in the military and the dynamics of that where you're fighting for your country, but is your country really fighting for you? Now here is the fourth and final level. This one's at the top of the museum and probably my favorite section is the culture galleries. And it talks about the African American experience through visual arts featuring African American visual artists. And then there's a section about our contributions to music, our contributions to theater and TV and all those things. And then just culture in general. Like there was one video that really stuck out to me that talked about the politics and just the culture surrounding hair and colorism and how that affects people today. Now here we delve more into the music section of this floor where it talks about and features more of the African-American artists that contributed to music and pop culture. So we talk about the different genres like rap, R&B, rock, jazz, all those things that originated from Black culture. And of course, gospel music is in here somewhere, of course. But they show jazz and artists like John Coltrane and Dizzy Gillespie and Miles Davis and those type of people, Duke Ellington, like all these greats that worked on jazz, which stemmed from African Americans. Then they show the costumes they wore back then, some of the stage props that are iconic that people would recognize. And they showed clips from some of their old performances. So even people from younger generations that may not Remember, some of these greats are not been around. We can still experience what it was like to see these artists live and in their elements and how their contributions led to some of the genres of music we have today. Now, once I finished my tour of the four floors, I went downstairs to go to the super busy museum gift shop to get some souvenirs. Because if I'm leaving DC, the one thing I want a souvenir of is from the National Museum of African American History and Culture. And here is Chinatown! Oh my god, everything was so amazing here. This is my first time ever going to a Chinatown area in any major city, so it's cool that DC was my first time going to a Chinatown area. And like all the architecture was beautiful, the food was amazing, the cool shops that were there. And I just found it interesting that even just regular everyday shops like a CVS or a Walgreens would have the Chinese characters next to it. So it was a pretty interesting experience just walking through the streets, soaking in up all the scenery and it was just so beautiful. I went here right after my client shoot that I originally came to DC for and then spent the rest of the day just enjoying soaking up all the sun. This is one of the few days where DC decided not to totally freeze me in like the first day. Hey everyone, I'm checking out of my hotel room. By the way, look at this cool chair, like look at this. This is so cool. But anyway, I'm checking out of my hotel today, leaving DC. Wish I could stay here forever, but gotta go home to Atlanta. But I hope you liked this video. You know, press like, subscribe, share with your friends. 
and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest. All those links, links will be below in the description box. And stay tuned for my next tour dates. I'll take it.